I'm Tony Ruiz of Gold Derby here with Allison Williams, who plays Lucy Smith Fuller uh, in Fellow Travelers. And, and Allison, I feel like this is a role where this character in particular could be seen, could be written as one dimensional, um, as the obstacle between Hawk and Tim. But I feel like you are given such a character of such subtlety and depth. Um, that we almost end up feeling as much for her. Is that one of the things that attracted you to her? Definitely. I think I found Lucy appealing kind of immediately, almost in an effort to want to understand her and her choices. But I agree that the love story between Tim and Hawk is so moving and so what you want to root for that it, I'm very lucky that Ron decided to imbue Lucy with such a deep inner life and also give her the chance to show it. Um, I definitely was attracted to everything about the project when I, when I first encountered it and Lucy's interiority was really just icing on the cake. I just loved having a chance to explore who this person was, why she made the choices she did and how those choices felt over time as she changed as we all do. Well, one of the things that, that I just noticed, and you mentioned it just there is, is, so much of what we come to understand about her, you don't get to communicate through big, expressive monologues. A lot of times we get hints, we get clues, there's a look. And so are those specific moments in the script? Is that a result of your, your conversations and your work with, with Daniel Minahan, the director? It's a combination of all of it. Um, we all spoke ad nauseum about every moment. The whole team behind the show was so detailed and meticulous. It was like a dream, honestly. Ron's scripts were so beautiful. He was there for every second of it. There's a real continuity, even as as Daniel left and we had other directors, there was such a continuity of vision and storytelling because Ron was there at the monitors every day. Um, and he really felt strongly in the specificity of every moment. And I also felt the same way when I prepare something like this, I like to go back, back, back to the beginning of Lucy's life, write the whole story of it. And so I love any opportunity to have like a detailed and nuanced reaction to something that has a little bit more in it than what might the scene and the moment might call for superficially. Um, and so I loved that. I, I loved giving the directors in the edit an opportunity to understand what Lucy is going through at any given moment in the event that they wanted to uh, explore that and cut to that. Um, and if they didn't, it was fine. But I just always was trying to be reacting with real specificity. The only challenge there was just keeping track of where we were in time, <laughs> and what Lucy knew and when and, and all of those things and what the audience knew too. Um, you know, not reacting to things that nobody knows yet. Um, that That was a challenge. Well, and you get the benefit. I've spoken to both uh, Anastasia, the production designer, and Joseph, the costume designer, in recent days. And having to balance all these, and you're not shooting sequentially. So no. one day you're shooting in this decade, one day you're shooting another decade. You're playing a character who spans you know, almost four decades. And so what is the mental gymnastics? Does it all just come down to pre preparation to make sure yes. you're in the right yes, spot. Yes, I think in, in one sense, yes. But in another, the work of Anastasia and Joseph is like the lattice work that we all get to rely on. Um, you get it, it's at a certain point, you can only be so confused when you walk into a trailer and there's just 50s clothing in there. And you're like, okay, we are in the 50s using context clues. Um, but yes, I, know, I had like that kind of sounds fun to me. It's so fun. I had I had lists, I had Google Docs of like this is the story, the chronology timeline of Lucy's life. This is the timeline of facts as they are uh told in the show and this is the chronology of things as we are shooting them and they did not match up ever but it was very helpful for me to kind of keep track of those things but everybody it was one of those projects where everyone is so dialed in and so specific and so in lockstep that really the the consistency between the departments and and the consistency of vision and effort was extraordinary. I mean, we were very lucky as actors to work with the teams that we did because even if, and for Matt, it was dizzying. I don't know how this man did it, but even if he's lost in time and space and he just like wanders into the hair and makeup trailer, you know, Jordan and Michelle are going to be like, okay, we are putting, it is 1967 and we are putting you, you know, 
everyone was on the same page. Not that that ever happened to Matt. He's superhuman. Again, I repeat, I don't know how he did this show. I don't understand. The amount of dialogue that came out of his mouth is remarkable. But anyway, I digress. Yeah, well, I, as I was watching it, you know, there are so many moments where Lucy makes choices that could be interpreted one way. Like the, the moment where she you know, burns Tim's uh, letter. Um, that was a moment, that was a moment that could have easily been villainous in yes. a less nuanced way. Uh, yeah. But instead, it's more of a of a life-preserving moment. Am I reading that correct? 100%. I think, well, it's it can look either way depending on whose love story you're more invested in. And at that point, I, I can admit that probably most people just wanted Hawk to get that letter. Um, but for Lucy, it is confirmation of something and it is a moment. It's a choice for her. She can either allow Hawk's life determine the course of their lives together, or she can make a choice in a world with not many choices to just end something and start something else and continue something else that's starting. But the fact that she brings it up later with Tim tells me that she thought about it a lot. I think she thought about it a lot, not just the existence of the letter and the existence of Tim over the years. Um, but I think there's part of her that felt guilt about it, honestly, um, in the moments of real um, benevolence towards Hawk thinking, you know, was this, how in love was he? And how much did, to what extent did I completely interrupt that love story? I think those thoughts would have crept into her mind um, over the over the years. So, yeah, I think it was a moment that had to be done very carefully. Um, the heartbreak of it, trying to imagine very fundamentally, take the genders out of it. We can imagine what it would feel like to intercept something like that. You know, when you see the modern version of it would be like seeing a text pop up on your partner's phone that you don't want to see you you there are so many choices about how to handle that situation and we can litigate lucy's choice but the fact that she got to make a choice stood out to me in a world where she didn't she wasn't as in she was more empowered with choice than she realized i think which eventually she realizes but during those years i don't think she felt like she had a lot of choices but to make the situation that she was in more tolerable well and it's interesting because you say that because joseph LaCourt said something interesting to me the other day where he's talked about the the clothes that these people wear was in many ways an armor uh, for oh, them. Totally. And, and so totally. did you find that to be the case with, yes. with Lucy? Yes, yes. And I have a closet full of Lucy, beautiful Lucy costumes from Joseph. And I just adore them. And I'm like, someday I'm going to need them. <laughs> I'm going to need that armor for something and I'm going to be ready. Um, I love Joseph is such a genius. I love him so much. He made such beautiful clothes for us. And Lucy in particular, she, she just felt like she had a few things she could control in her world and she was going to control them. And one of those things was looking perfect all the time. And, um, I just was crazy about watching her move through time and that moment in the 60s where everything got a little messy and then it got snatched right back up for the 70s. Um, I, I think he did a beautiful job of telling that story in our clothes. And um, yeah, I mean, the smallest details, the the width of a lapel, the, the pleat or lack of pleat of a pant for the men. I mean, every single stitch of clothing was thought of by Joseph. Well, and there's two specific moments that I feel like just, you know, give us such an insight into Lucy that makes her not just the typical uh, scorned wife. Um, there's the moment between Lucy and Chet. And though that whole scene, it's almost like she's doing it to reaffirm herself. It it's almost becomes like a life-saving measure for her. Yeah, I think it's like a kind of an effort moment for her she's like she gets a little more drunk than she means to she's just kind of feeling herself it's like her id gets to come out and play for a second I love the moments where you see Hawk kind of clocking what's happening and wondering how he feels about it um and in the when we filmed it she pushes him away after kissing him for a while and kind of staggers outside but the way it's cut now it's unclear whether or not it leads to more 
or if it stops there, which is and a very I interesting that. choice. I love that choice. I think that's Yeah, I do too. I loved knowing as the person playing Lucy, I think it was important that I know that she didn't, that she stopped it because the love of her life is Hawk. And the person, the only person whose attraction at that point she really covets is Hawk's. Um, but I like the ambiguity of it in the show. And I love that she then, in her very drunk state, all she wants is for Hawk to desire her. That is all she wants in the world is to feel that light on her from him. Um, and I think that she probably thought about that night a lot. I, I did as the person playing her. This Is there a version of her life where she left with Chet, where she just decided to go be with this very kind of mild man and do a very dramatic and, and scandalous thing to both of their marriages and then live a life together with him or with somebody else or just leave Hawk like what I think that was probably the closest she got until the end yeah and that end that end that last scene between you and Matt is so subtle and yet so powerful and Lucy is in many ways again that is a scene that you've seen in other shows but I don't think has done with this amount of sympathy and empathy with both characters oh that's very kind that was the goal for sure it's very easy to imagine um that scene where you're just thinking like you know because at that point in the show tim is not doing well and it's this unrequited love story that you've now been tracking over the course of eight episodes and you just you know what you want at that stage you want hawk to become the person that we've been wanting him to become the whole show and there's this little part of us that knows that he won't and um, so I just was really aware in preparing it that that was the backdrop against which this conversation was going to be happening. But conveniently, where Lucy is in this moment is, is full of such clarity and sadness, but just total confidence that this is the right thing, that it was such a relief to her, I think, to just relay that information to Hawk and performing it felt much less, um, much less difficult than I thought it was going to. It was still hard, so I can't say easier, but it didn't feel as devastating because of how sure she is from the beginning. You know, it's that moment where when you've decided to end a relationship and then you're looking at them from like this other bird's eye view, this person that you've been inside a bubble with for all these years. Now you're standing on the outside of it, looking at them. And it's a very different way of being in a room with someone you've been in rooms with for an uncountable amount of hours of her life. Um, she can see him in this whole new way. And I often wondered if in that moment she was able to see him with more empathy, with more humanity. Um, we see that resentment flicker up a little bit when she's like, do you have any idea what it's been like to just not feel desire for all these years? Um, so, and she's entitled to that. <laughs> resentment. Entitled, yes. But I, I think it bodes well for whatever happens next for her is going to be very, you know, self-assured and, and, um, yeah, just driven by uh, whatever she wants. My God, go to Europe, girl. Have an affair with like a, a you know, an Italian man. <laughs> like just go on a Vespa, have espresso, live your life, go to museums, just get a tan, you know, maybe quit smoking. It's going to be better for your health. Consider it anyway. Um, anyway, yeah. Well, I, actually, I was going to, I was going to end with that was, you know, I've talked to actors who have gotten to do this kind of like play a character that spans, you know, basically a lifetime and yeah. different actors have different responses in terms of, you know, especially in a case like this, where the end is unknown for the viewer. I'm curious if you had an ending in your mind for where you wanted Lucy to be, if you, if, if you could see her in the future, how, how do you think the, the late 20th, early 21st century would have treated Lucy? I like to think that she would have gone, she was ready to go to Italy. And I kind of love the idea that she does go, that she just goes to Europe for a little while um, after staying with her daughter and her family for a little bit, just to make sure everyone's okay. Going to have a little bit of a walkabout in Europe and try to remember the version of herself that had been there before meeting, re-meeting and marrying Hawk. Um, I then think she would have come back, um, because 
being around her daughter and her grandchildren would have been too intoxicating to miss out on. But I'd like to think she would have found a partner for the latter half of life that was obsessed with her, that just loved her. And maybe in her quiet moments, she would admit to herself that that amount of love and devotion felt a little bit boring. But honestly, the vast majority of it, I think she would have felt like so lucky to have someone look at her the way that she wished Hawk would for all of those years. Yeah. But I think also like her business and she would continue her interior design and, and continue having her aesthetic experience and being able to express herself in that way for sure. And maybe she'd let things go a little bit more. That'd be nice. Well, uh, Allison, congratulations. I mean, it's just such a great performance and such a wonderful series. Uh, everybody go to goldderby.com, make your predictions for the upcoming award season and stay tuned for interviews uh, with more contenders in the coming weeks. Allison Williams, uh, a great pleasure. Thank you. Thank you so much. 